Okay, I guess everyone's here. Um, so, uh, so why am I giving this presentation? Um, so I guess people might have noticed that some of us have gotten like more involved in your projects and you know getting uh, giving advice or you know steering you in certain directions. And I just want to kind of give some background on like why we're doing this and like what my vision is on how, you know, what, how we should be organizing things differently um, and what we should be changing. And so uh, hopefully out of this, you know, get a better understanding of how we like to work and maybe, you know, organize things better. Um, so just basically, you know, everyone knows this sort of agile process, right? Um, that's supposed to make you work efficiently and deliver great products and everything. Um, I'm not here to sell you on like any specific, you know, agile scrum or whatever specific methodology, but there's a general sort of thing where, um, you know, the way you want to work is you make a design first, you break it down into tasks and then, um, you make a first prototype, some first implementation, you get feedback. And then you start iterating, right? You update the design on task based on, based on the feedback. You implement and you document more. You get more feedback. And at some point, you know, everyone's happy, ideally. And then you're done. Um, and I think even this is, if you were just working for yourself on something solving a problem, this is probably how you would work. Like, if you actually care about solving it quickly, you would make something that, you know, is an additional approximation of what you want to solve and then you iterate on it and you just get it done right it's sort of the natural thing even a way of working and it's only when you start thinking about long timelines or you know working in some more formal process that maybe you move away from this and you have to uh, be careful and so in practice unfortunately it doesn't always work this way like the first step you might think oh i'll just get something in in a few weeks but then somehow it takes months or like later on in the project, you're at some point, you're sort of always continuously a few weeks or a few months away from it being done, but then you're a few weeks and a few months later and it's still not done. So what, what happens? And then, unfortunately, the number of iterations, it, it can go to zero or one, which means that you have like an MVP that's done, but you haven't actually made it, you know, really good. Like you haven't really, um, you know, got it to really fully solve the problem and you move on to something else because everyone's tired of the thing or, you know, and then, unfortunately, the quality suffers, and it's unfortunate. Um, so why does this happen? I mean, the obvious thing is you have too much other stuff to do, and that's, I mean, that's valid, or, you know, maybe you just don't have enough time within whatever time span you were planning. Um, you know, m many people here have multiple responsibilities that you might get distracted, and I, that's, like, 100% valid, like, you know, uh, that's not the point to criticize thing. It's like, but the thing is that within the time that we do have for the project, I think we still make mistakes. And um, yeah, I just want to like talk about some of them and how we can address them. And so here's a list of common mistakes that I have all made. Like the point is not to say like, I'm, you know, I've never made these because I've made all of them multiple times, probably uh, different times. So uh, let's go over some of them. Like. One, one mistake is that you think, well, the design is done and now we just do the implementation, right? That's like your classic waterfall thinking for people who are familiar with that. It's like you just think you can design up front and then implement it. And then, unfortunately, the real world doesn't agree with your design. And, uh, you know, really you have to be prepared to change your design uh, as you're working. Um, the other thing is that uh, you might think your project will be done when everything you planned is done, but unfortunately, everyone's bad at planning software projects. That's just a reality. And so you have to understand that your plans will change and there will be things in your list that you didn't anticipate. And uh, yeah, that's, that's a problem. Um, another thing is that you might underestimate the difficulty of what you're doing. Um, you might not fully understand the problem. Like a common one is you think I have X and I have Y and I just need to combine them and integrate them and then, you know, we're done, right? But often like integrating things is actually the hard part. Like the beautifully isolated things are fine, but then when you put everything together, like there might be additional requirements or the integration might actually be the hard part uh, rather than like the individual parts. Um, another common mistake is that you think, well, I'm just gonna like refactor everything. I'm gonna make my code beautiful and like it's gonna be like perfectly prepared to, pre to implement the thing. Um, and then everything after is gonna go smoothly. 
But what often happens is that actually um, you didn't understand the problem well enough. So you might actually be refactoring the wrong thing or you might be refactoring something that's not even necessary. Or maybe refactoring doesn't actually help make you develop things faster afterwards. Like the benefit might not actually be worth it. And then you run the risk of like getting you know, stuck doing this refactoring or other things rather than actually finishing the project. Um, another temptation is to think, well, I work on this thing and then I notice this other thing is bad, so let's fix that as well. Or let's rewrite that or let's refactor it or whatever. And, uh, you know, you might just get stuck doing all kinds of things which are not really essential to the project and, uh, and things just, you know, spiral out of control and take too long. Um, another common thing is you just kind of get tunnel vision you know, you might be facing like this one difficult thing that you're working on and you just think, well, I just got to get through this one thing. And if I get that out of the way, then, um, you know, everything else will go smoothly. But then, you know, maybe you need some advice from other people. Maybe you, you need to work on something else for a while and come back to it or do like a first iteration on it um, because maybe it's not actually that big a problem or maybe, you know, maybe you'll find out there's a different way of doing things or, or, or whatever. But uh, so that's another thing to look out for. And then another thing is thinking, well, I didn't get it done this week, but like somehow in the future, next week, next month, I'm just going to be extra productive. Um, and just, you know, that's somehow I didn't get it done this week, but next week I'm going to have the time or the energy or whatever to do it. And sometimes you do because like productivity, it changes. Like one week you're more productive than the other. That's true, but you cannot really count on that as like a project planning strategy. Um, so... Yeah, so these are some common mistakes. Um, and so how do you solve this? Well, I don't have a magic solution, but like the first thing is to just acknowledge like all these things can happen, right? Like if you're working on something, um, like no one here is a machine, so everyone has like, a, is dealing with these kinds of questions all the time. Um, and it's just hard, like it's really hard to, to you know, develop software and do, to, you know, it's always difficult and unpredictable. So. The first thing is obviously acknowledging that these things are problems and then having them in the back of your mind and knowing that, you know, they can happen and being able to talk, you know, be aware of them in a project and just, you know, being able to talk to them, uh, to talk about them with other people. Uh, I think it's helpful and that's kind of part of the point of this presentation. Uh, and so I'll now give some more concrete sort of advice on what to do. It's again, not a magic bullet, but, um, sort of how I like to think about things. So one thing is uh, when you think about like the time spent on like particular things, um, it's important to, you know, you can sort of break things down into multiple levels. Um, and here I'm just, these are sort of conservative estimates. Like it, it can be uh, this long, but maybe it's even better if you take less time or you know, make your steps even smaller so that it doesn't take so long. But uh, just sort of one way of different levels of thinking about it. It's like for yourself, say you're working on something, you're working on a specific commit or some, you know, some specific thing, a bug that you're fixing or whatever. Um, if whatever you're working on like by yourself at that, in that day, if it takes longer than a day, it's probably too big. Like you've probably taken too, too big, you're trying to do too much at once because you can't really keep that many things in your head at the same time. Um, you know, you might forget or you might get distracted doing something else. It's, it's important to like try to like finish things frequently and uh, like a day, I feel, I feel it's like a decent unit, even less if you can. But um, And then when you're uh, not working by yourself but you want to get feedback from other developers, I feel like you should every week at least try to get something, you know, out there in terms of the code that you're working on. Like if something's on your computer, like some code's on your computer, for more than a week and no one else has looked at it, it's probably that you're working on it for too long or you haven't like split it up into something that's small enough for other developers to, to look at and maybe give advice or, um, or to even force yourself to you know, make something that's okay, this is actually something that's ready for other people to look at. Um, and then the next level is um, when you talk about feedback from users, is that ideally you want to have something tangible like within a month or something, like something that, uh, some first iteration of your project that's real in a way that, you know, it's a thing that's running that you can test even if it does very little. Um, just having something, it really helps even if you're trying it yourself, it really makes things real and helps you understand the problem better. Um, 
So ideally, get feedback from users, but even if you know, you're self-testing it or someone else in the company or whatever, um, getting towards something real very quickly within like a month, ideally, then that, I think that really helps to, um, yeah, help to get to move things along. And then for release, like if, if any project that we're working on is not planned for this or the next release, I feel like it's too big and needs to be broken up. Like if you're planning, oh, we're going to do this in three releases from now, then we probably haven't done a good job of like figuring out how to break down the project into smaller steps. Um, so yeah. And so how, how do you break things down into smaller steps? I mean, there's no single recipe, but um, one is, you know, you just make an honest sort of complete list of things that need to be done. Um, even things that are, you know, challenging that you don't know how to do yet. Like, just, just try to be like, uh, complete. Um, then like, identify what's actually important and what you can eliminate or at least postpone. Um, and then as you break it down into steps, it, I think it's really helpful to, or important to um, break things down into steps where you go from working state to working state because what can happen is that at every step you kind of introduce more bugs and, and, and things speak and you sort of work yourself deeper into a hole where later on you have to work yourself out of it and uh, fix all those bugs, the remaining dangling issues. And you, it can be a problem because fixing something that you broke yesterday or you know an hour ago is is usually you know, very quick. You might just know immediately, but break, fixing something you broke like three months ago, you might have to start might have to start bisecting, or you might have to you know spend so much time debugging and, and trying to remember how this thing worked that it's just not efficient to fix something that you broke uh, three months ago. Like that's that's just not great. Um, the other thing is like if you talk about refactors, uh, you want to make them part of the iterative process. Like if you do something before, if you refactor beforehand, you might just be refactoring the wrong thing. If you do it after, it's probably just not going to happen. Um, so, so you want to make it part of the process and not you know part of the iterations. Um, the other thing is like when you're deciding whether you're going to rewrite something or or change it, like you, I think it's really important to sort of value like the implicit knowledge and years of refinement that's in existing code. Like you might have a piece of code and you think, well, this looks terrible, like what, what is this crap? But actually there's a bunch of assumptions in there that you might think you know, but actually you don't because it integrates with things in unexpected ways or it, it works in a particular way that you might need not be aware of. So whenever you want to like, you know, replace something, it's important to think, oh, maybe we can do it in an incremental way that preserves the logic or in a way that, you know, has less risk of like breaking a bunch of stuff. Um, and the last one, I think we should probably be better at like giving advice of how to break things down. Um, like often I hear people say, well, it's not possible to do this in smaller steps. But I usually think, I think it is usually. Um, and yeah, just talk about it with other people if you don't know how to do it. Um, and uh, we have to be more proactive about it as well, of course. But um, so yeah. Then there's keeping track of what's going on. So I mean, people of obviously no one, no one likes like all the all the overhead and, and and bookkeeping and all this stuff. But I think it's still important for yourself and for others to have a complete list of you know where you are, of, of what remains to be done. That's realistic and. Um, and for that reason, I think it's important to remember that it's important to have a list that's brief and complete rather than something that's detailed and outdated, right? You might, it, it often happens that people make this really beautiful design document or you, you make this beautiful Kanban board or whatever and you organize it. And then after two weeks, no one's looking at it anymore. Like the actual state of things is in your head instead of on the thing. Um, and so for that reason, I think it's important that you just make it convenient to whatever list of tasks that you have that it's easy to update. And so if a Kanban board or if whatever methodology you choose, if it works for you, great. If it doesn't, try to pick something simpler, um, even if it's just a little, a simple issue with like a task list or whatever, um, you know, pick something that's real instead of something that's, uh, yeah, maybe looks nice at the beginning, but doesn't really reflect where you are. Because it can be really difficult for other people to see where the project really is if you're not doing this. And uh, just having like a real list me means that also people can better understand. Like if you take long on something, like why did it take so long? Well, if there's a long list of things to be done, uh, it's, it's more clear, I guess. Um, 
And so another thing is that people might be hesitant to like write down a task because then suddenly you feel responsible for doing it, or it's like, oh, I'm added more work for myself. But you can also think about it the, in the other way around. Like you might think, well, it's actually, I'm just offloading this mental thing onto uh, a task, and now I might later decide just not to do it. Uh, but at least it's not just like something I have to keep in my head and worry about later. It's, I would rather think of it like, yeah, just offloading it rather than um, giving yourself work because it's, it's there anyway, like it's not going away whether it's in your head or it's in the task list. Um, some practical things. Uh, so one is, you know, when you're working on like a pull request or commit, I like to like keep a list of things that, um, that I need to do. Like I might, for example, like write a bunch of code and like at some point I need to open a file and check for errors or something but I don't want to break my flow and I just want to keep going, so I might add a small to-do comment saying, like, check this later. And then later, fixing it is probably easy. Um, but, like, being diligent about those kinds of things, uh, I think it helps because you forget that you needed to check this error or that you needed to do this, and then that might lead to a bug later on that you spend hours debugging rather than something that you could have just uh, fixed right away. Um, Again, update your task list after you've landed pull request, like keep, you know, keep your task list up to date. I think it's also helps to track what you don't know how to solve yet or what you suspect might become a problem, um, even if it's like a one-liner, just, uh, just so that it's there and uh, you know about it and we know about it. And uh, yeah, then at least uh, it's not something that you remember like two weeks before the release, like, oh yeah, there's this, this thing. Um, because that kind of thing can happen. Um, track refactors as well. Like, I mean, it's it's important thing thing to do as well. So like, plan for them to take time as well. And then yeah, just try to split essential and optional tasks. I think um, like try to like keep uh, make it clear like what you actually really have to solve and what, what's uh, optional. Um, so yeah, these are some practical tips for people. This is um, kind of what I think we should do as sort of the more of the leadership. Um, and some of the stuff we, uh, we've, we've basically been doing in, for the last two months or we've been trying to do. So one is I think we should not over plan or over announce things. Um, like the track next three months you can sort of plan beyond that. It becomes sort of a vague indication of, yeah, we'd like to work on this or that, but we're not really sure of it. And past the next six months, it tends to become complete fiction. Like in reality, like you can have this in your mind, but it's probably not gonna, gonna really gonna happen. Um, so, you know, you have to be sort of expecting that and, and not try to over announce like, oh, we're gonna do all this this year. And then maybe we don't actually do it. I would rather us announce like every three months uh, to the community, like this is what we're working on rather than like at the beginning of the year and try to tell them what we're going to do for the entire year. I mean. At least that's what I feel, uh, how I feel about it. Obviously, there's, you balance it with like uh, getting attention for the development fund and everything, like obviously. But it's, uh, I would rather we more frequently post updates on what we're planning than, um, yeah, try to announce things very far in advance. And so the way I see it is that like the modules, they track all your long-term goals beyond the three months and something might be somewhere on the workboard, but then when we're actually planning and announcing, like we're mostly thinking about the next three months, more or less. Um, so other thing is that we have to be more closely involved in the various projects. I mean, uh, when everything runs by itself, like it's great, that's what we all want. Uh, no one wants to manage, and no one wants to be managed ideally, I guess, or maybe some people enjoy it, I don't know. But uh, reality is that uh, we just have to do better at this and just be more closely involved in the various things that are going on. Um, and that, that's what we've been trying to do in the, in the past few months and probably will continue to do. Um, obviously, on the other hand, it's like if people learn how better how to manage and organize projects and we need less of that. So, um, but uh, for now, I think there's just going to be more involvement on that side and, and trying to help everyone keep the projects on track and sort of learning how to organize things um, by doing it. Um, so that's, that's one thing. Uh, the other thing is that, yeah, by just being organized, I think we can adjust the scope or even cancel projects in some cases early. We almost never cancel anything. Um, 
but maybe sometimes you've you know you work on something for a month and you see well this is not this is going to be too painful that's not going to be worth it so i feel like we should be uh realistically considering those things and the, the goal is to make you know blender as good as possible for people not to stick to a predefined timeline right so you just want to be working on the important things and sometimes that means not doing something or doing something smaller or whatever um Again, uh, we should push for people to make like complete task lists and get early user feedback. I know it can be annoying to get a reminder, please you know, do this or that, but I think it's important to uh, sort of face the reality at some point, and uh, that's a bit our job, I think, to make people face the reality of like uh, where they really are and what it means for users uh, to use it. I think we also have to be better at sort of anticipating risks of various projects. Like you can think, well, maybe this is going to be a problem, but you know, let's not worry about it for now. But uh, we should probably do a bit better at sort of anticipating those, the kinds of things that can go wrong and uh, and not like you know deal with them too late. Um, so yeah, that's that's actually it. Um, thank you.